I'm gonna show you how to create this fun green screen effect in iMovie using a little trick known in the editing world as pre-rendering. So what's pre-rendering? Well, the concept is simple. You export or pre-render an intermediate version or section of your project and then import it back into your project and continue editing with it. So why go through all that trouble? Well, because iMovie only has two tracks of video to work with, the main video track and the overlay track. And the overlay track can only do one thing at a time. So for example, you can't do green screen and picture in picture at the same time. Pre-rendering is a rudimentary but effective way to get around that limitation in iMovie. Let me show you by recreating my little example. All right, so here we are in iMovie. This is iMovie version 10.3.5. And I've got my green screen clip here, me on this hastily lit <laughs> green screen. You can see a few shadows there. It's not the greatest green screen, but not to worry. iMovie is pretty good with green screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my background clip. So to do that, I'll go up to backgrounds. And then I'm going to select from the backgrounds educational still. So I'll select that, then hit the E key to place it in the timeline. And you can see our clip here, but you can also see there's an animation on this. This is the infamous Ken Burns animation, and I don't want that for this demo. So I'm going to select the background here then go up to the cropping tool, select that. And you can see Ken Burns is in effect here. I'm going to switch it to crop to fill. That way I get my map without these black bars on either side. I'll take it by hitting the check mark here. And so here is now my map background. Excellent. OK, I'm going to go back to my media now and I'm going to place my green screen clip here. It's already selected. So to place it in the overlay track above the main timeline, I'm going to hit the Q key for connected clip. It's not quite C, it's Q, but that's <laughs> what it represents. It means placing a connected clip. So I'll hit Q. And there goes my green screen into the timeline, but you can see it's very long compared to the background. So I'm just going to hit command minus to zoom out of the timeline. You can see there my green screen clip is way longer than my background. So I'm just going to line up my green screen with the background. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag on the background. All right, here we go. So we play that back. We can see B in the green screen. So now I want to knock out the green, right? That's what you want to do with green screen. So I'll select my green screen clip and I'll go up and I'll go up to cutaway and switch that to green screen. And there I am on the map. This is not what I want. I want to be small down in the corner of the map, right? So how do I do that? I can't right now because with the overlay track, it can only be in one mode at a time. Either it's going to be green screen or if you want to shrink yourself down, you'd switch it over from green screen to picture in picture. OK, now I'm shrunk down and I can place myself in the corner like so, but I cannot knock out that green screen can't do two things at once. So this is where the concept of pre-rendering comes in, where we're going to export a portion or a section of our project and bring it back in and continue to work with it. For this first export, this first pre-render, what we're going to do is we're going to size my green screen down and position it where I want to in the map. So with it here in picture in picture, I'm going to use a little trick. When you place a picture in picture clip, it automatically puts this little dissolve on. Now, I don't want to use this dissolve for my actual demo, but it's handy for placing my green screen clip. As you can see, when it's semi transparent like that, if I park the playhead right there when it's semi transparent, I can go up and now I can place it where I want to and be able to see the map behind it. So I'm going to size it up so I'm not covering the text that says Indian Ocean just below that. And I'll place myself right there on the snapping guide. I can get rid of this dissolve effect by simply clicking and dragging on the little handle you can see down here. And that gets rid of the fade. You can also go up to the top here. Beside the picture in picture setting, there's a dissolve setting. You can see these numbers. That's the time of the dissolve. So if I select those numbers and zero it out, I lose that dissolve. So either way, you can get rid of that dissolve. The next step is kind of the magic sauce of this whole thing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my background section here. And this time I'm going to select the green background. So I'm going to click and drag that 
down to the main track and I'm gonna hold it over the background clip here and you can see the little plus sign. So if I release, I get this menu. Do I wanna replace this? Do I wanna replace from the start, replace from the end, insert? I'm gonna select replace from start. And there, my map background has been replaced with this green background. Why did I do that? You'll see in the moment. So now what we have is me and my green screen clip shrunk down and positioned where I want. And then I have this green background. Okay, so for the next step before we render or pre-render or export this out and bring it back in, I wanna animate myself on. So to do that, I'm gonna select my picture in picture clip. And you can see in the preview window here, up here, this little weird little interface with a bunch of symbols with no text so you don't know what's going on. Of course, if you hover over, it'll show you add a new keyframe at the playhead. So this is the keyframing system in iMovie. So if I play this, now here's a part. So I wanna be on just before I start talking. So I'm gonna bring myself back using the arrow keys here and there, just around there. So now with that position set, I'm going to place my playhead there and then I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna hit the little plus to set a keyframe there. And that'll lock in my position right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the playhead and I'm gonna drag it to the beginning of this clip. And I'm gonna go over and now I'm gonna click and drag on my picture in picture while holding the shift key to constrain the drag horizontally. I'm gonna drag myself off screen. Let's see how this worked. Now here's a popular- And there I am, a talking animating on. on. I'll do the same thing at the end of this clip to animate myself off screen real quick. All right, and here's me animating off screen. All made possible using pre-rendering. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna export this timeline by going up to the little export icon here. I'm going to select export file. Now here's what's key when you're pre-rendering. When we're exporting our pre-renders, we wanna export them in the highest quality possible. During the editing process, we wanna maintain the quality of our media as much as possible. We don't wanna be doing any unnecessary compression during the editing process. We wanna save that for when we're exporting for the final upload to whatever platform that we're sending our video. So right now it's 1080p resolution, which is correct, but for quality, it's set to high. From this menu, I'm gonna select best ProRes. And then compress, I'm going to select better quality. And I'll hit next. And then I'll find a place to save it to. And I'll name this demo first pass so I know what it is and I can keep track. So I will go and hit that and export. Back out to my media section here. And I'm going to create a new project. So I'll go up to projects and here create new, new movie. And I'm gonna name this right away. So I'll go back and hit projects. It brings up the naming dialog and I'll name this green screen pip for picture in picture final. Hit okay. And then I'll go back in here. You can see I already have one called final <laughs> down here. I was working on it before. So iMovie automatically named this final one. So you don't have duplicates. So I'll select that. All right, now I'm gonna bring in the pre-render that I exported into this new project by simply clicking and dragging it from the finder into the media browser, and there it is. Let's see from the beginning here. Now here's a popular There's my animation. A talking head on a transparent background. Looks good, I'll scroll to the and end just to see the exit. Great, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that map background back into the timeline by simply going back up to backgrounds and over here to educational still. I'll select it, hit the E key to place it in the main timeline. Of course, that Ken Burns effect is gonna be on it again. So I'll select, go up to the cropping tool, switch to crop to fill, take it with the check mark. And there we have the background. I'll go back to my media and I'm gonna place my playhead to the beginning of the timeline. I'll select my green screen animated clip. I'm gonna hit the Q key again. 
to place the connected clip, command minus to zoom out of the timeline there. And I'm going to click and drag on my map to bring it out. Now we have the green screen. A popular effect, a talking head on a transparent background down. Can't see the background map yet. And that's what this step is going to be. So I'll select my overlay clip. I'll go up and switch it from cutaway to green screen, blue screen. Now you can see it's not totally transparent. You can see the shaded area. That's because my green screen and the green background are slightly different. Not a problem. I'm going to go up to the green screen cleanup tools here in iMovie. I'll select this little eraser and then I'm going to just click and drag across my green screen shot until I get rid of that shading. There we are. Okay. Let's have a look at this now. Now here's a popular effect, a talking head on a transparent background down in the corner of the screen. Great for tutorial videos or any kind of learning videos. Now this effect was created using the second or overlay track in iMovie in green screen mode and picture in picture mode, all made possible using pre-rendering. So now what I would do is export this final project. So let's do that. We'll go back up to the export button, export file. But this time I'm going to export in the normal settings I would use, say, if I was uploading this to YouTube or some other online video platform. So I'm going to switch quality back to high, which will give me an H.264 or MP4 file that YouTube likes. And I will switch compress to better quality and then I'll hit next. I'll select a name and a location. Call this final export. Hit save. Here's a look at the final export. Now here's a popular effect, a talking head on a transparent background down in the corner of the screen. So that's one way you can use pre-rendering to get around iMovie's limitations to create some fun and interesting effects like that green screen effect. You can also use pre-rendering to create what are called multi-track animated effects like this one. Have a look at this video on my channel to find out how. <laughs>